Okay, I only caught part of that. What's going on? I only caught part of that. What's going on? Welcome everyone to City Council meeting for Monday, November 26th, 2018. If we could have a roll call to establish quorum, please, ma'am. Melissa Green. I'm here. Bob Thomas. Here. Terry McClung. I'm here. Tom Buford. Here. Vicki Schneider. Here. We have five. All right. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Any additions? Yes, ma'am. I would like to move number four to number one, please. Get a second. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any other changes? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Attorney, do we have number two ready? Number two is uh, being held by me because I wanted to see what council had to say about the changes oh, okay. that were So leave proposed. it on and discuss. That's what I'd like okay. to have you do if the okay. council is willing to do that. Okay. All right, any other? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Get approval of the minutes for November 15th. So moved. Second. Any changes, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Uh, we still have some vacancies on the Planning Commission uh, and also on the CAPC. Uh, so anybody out there who's interested in being on the Planning Commission, come by and pick up an application and, and uh, submit it. And also, uh, we have a reapplication for John Knuckles for the HDC. I'll make a motion to approve John Knuckles for position one for the HDC. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor, say by, by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Okay. Uh, Justin is here, Director of Parks, and he's going to give us a little quarterly report. And briefly. Briefly. <laughs> very briefly. Very briefly. Very briefly. It doesn't always work out when I get a microphone, but... Um, uh, handed out, and I do apologize for the small print on the uh, sheet, but this is a, our third quarter statement uh, for parks. Uh, from previous discussions, we wanted to just stay a little more informed, so we, and here we are. Um, uh, so we go through the financials looking pretty well. We have taxes. We have some questions on, on what these stand for, and we'll, we'll, we'll tweak this a little further. The first line IT is our quarter cent sales tax, the general revenue tax. The LLCP is Leatherwood Revenue, cash revenue. Uh, restricted is money that we have that is restricted for specific use uh, thing. In this case, this is the subsidy from the Walton Family Foundation for our trail manager and equipment purchases. Uh, so that is kept separately, I excuse because that money goes specifically towards that. Um, so just at a glance, we're, we're up considerably from last year, uh, a little bit below our, our ambitious projections for this year, uh, but with our conservative tax projections, we're working out pretty close to being right on the nose uh, overall and, and keeping our expenses uh, in, in good shape as well. Um, and some of the, the trail manager and equipment purchases have skewed our spending a little bit from our initial budget and, and projections. So, um, but we're still doing a really good shape and really, really happy with what we've done so far uh, this year. Um, just a, uh, our the bottom number, uh, the Leatherwood tax is accounted at the bottom uh, down here, LLCP master plan. Uh, this will show you our beginning balance, income year to date, what we spent um, uh, all across there. Uh, again, we're 
uh, doing well in, in that area, ticked up a little bit uh, as, ever, as their other taxes are. And, and just briefly what we've been up to the last quarter, I'll run through that real quick and take any questions and, and get out of y'all's hair real quick here. So um, we are coming in the home stretch on some office repairs at Parks Office. We had a termite problem, had to pull the floor, dig out, make four piers, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, Vince Pashka, our maintenance man, has leveled our floor from an inch and seven-eighths drop in one corner from the other. Uh, so we can actually sit still in our rolling chairs during the meeting now, which will be nice. Uh, and we're nearing that, so we're waiting for paint and flooring there, and we'll be back in business on that. Um, Leatherwood, we've done quite a bit up there. We've done a lot of work in our compound area. We're looking to put a shop building, which is taking advantage of the dump day, the trash pickup out there. Uh, we've had several trainings out there. We had a canine training with uh, Chief Samick and his uh, the groups from all over the country and the region came out to do canine training and searches out there. Uh, SORT had a the uh, training as well. Uh, and we've also had the fire department out there for a second time as we've looked at our new access roads and are continuing to dial in our response for the downhill areas. Um, and that's that's been very uh, very good improvement out there. And, uh, enjoying working with those guys on that. They're certainly happy to have better access to that. Um. Uh, we've had a couple inspections. We did have our well inspection, our da Leatherwood Dam inspection, which we passed on both of those. Uh, also working with Chris Fisher and the uh, Native Plant Society with the in uh, conjunction with the Wal Walton Family Foundation and the Forestry Grant. Uh, this is some money that we got to work for uh, planting and work in the areas of the downhill. Uh, some mitigation projects on that as well as some uh, arboretum projects. We've been really pleased as we've evolved over the last year and uh, uh, Chris has really come on and seen what we're doing and what we're trying to do and, and really uh, has, has become a real benefit to us and, and really being very active. So we're, we're really thankful to Mr. Fisher for all of that. Uh, we had started our shuttle actually charging this past weekend. It was our first weekend charging for the shuttle. We had a good weekend, almost uh, nearly $1,000 in income uh, this weekend for two days of blustery weather. It was one nice wow. day, I guess, in blustery weather. Um, so we were happy to see that and uh, still working out a few tweaks with our uh, pads and all that good stuff, but we'll, uh, we'll get it all lined out here soon and uh, received our new shuttle trailer. One of our new shuttle trailers, get the other one this week. Um, and then also I've worked out a deal with uh, Shuttlebug for a lease operations uh, uh, agreement through the end of January to give us some more financial details and, and see how everything goes with our season passes. So we're uh, very grateful actually to Shuttlebug for coming in. They're, this is a, a very beneficial to us and we appreciate them coming in to, to allow us a few more months to really dial in on, on what we're doing and what we're making out there. Uh, the Walton Foundation grant and the restricted money has allowed us to hire our trail manager, Austin Hayes. Uh, started a little over a month ago. Uh, he was one of the original rock solid crew members that helped build the downhill trails out at Leatherwood. Uh, so he has an intimate knowledge of that. Uh, young guy, very, uh, very much a go-getter. You can set him off in the woods and he gets lots of stuff done. It's great. <laughs> so uh, that's a <laughs> trick to find sometimes. Everybody works really well when you're in the interview, but you get yeah. out there unsupervised and that not always so great. So uh, he and John May uh, also on our trail crew. So we actually have a legitimate trail crew now, and uh, I think the results are already well, barring the leaves from yesterday, um, really showing a big impact on on how everything's are maintained and, and taking us up to a more professional level on that. Uh, and then additionally, a couple other trainings. Uh, Vince Peshka, our maintenance man, continues his uh, water wastewater water testing certifications. Uh, we're trying to keep him, getting him uh, trained a little further. And then Terry Liker, our gardener, attended the Horticulture Greenhouses and Facilities Symposium in Bittenville uh, last month, or month before, um, which goes along with what he does and a lot of things we had. And then it was Christmas three weeks ago, and so that's what we've been doing since then. So. <laughs> <clears throat> testing lights and consequently putting them up. And I do have some of these for you, Nikki, and some of the copies of that as well. So, any questions? Is that in the very last line under mm -hmm. the master plan? What's water quality? Water quality is we've set aside 20% of our Leatherwood rev tax revenue for 
call it two projects, two to three projects, which is the uh, updating and improvement of our water treatment, sewer treatment out there, and lake uh, water quality, which would involve dredging, getting our, our uh, gate and everything open up there. So it's we're sucking away that, you know, one out of five dollars, basically, as what we hope will be matches for those, those projects to come in. So, so does it have anything to do with putting in drinkable water by the little cabins? <laughs> yes, eventually. Yes, okay, yes, thank yes, you. yes. It will. <laughs> Good. <laughs> those are camping cabins, though. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like little <laughs> sleepers. <laughs> yeah, it's, more, it's more like a tent. It's a yeah. fancy tent, sort of. So. <laughs> yeah, you can't blow around. Right. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else? Super duper. All right, Justin. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a special guest uh, that kind of showed up unexpectedly, and I'd like to introduce Catherine Baker. Uh, she's our representative with Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. She is taking over Jay Stallard's position. She is, the title is? I'm a Community and Economic Development Coordinator. Thank you. Yeah. She is the one who is helping us go after all these grants. Okay. Uh, and I'm real excited because she's come in like a, a stormtrooper and, and just uh, been real exciting and, and helping us out. And, uh, we're going to be seeing you probably next month or January. We're probably have, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, you want to? Sure. Um, as Mary Berry said, I'm Catherine Baker. I work at the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. We're a public nonprofit, but essentially work as a state agency. So my job as a grant administrator there is to write the applications for grants that the state administers. And then we also do some grant writing for uh, agencies that are not state agencies. We do uh, historical district preservation grants and we work with private foundations also. We're kind of branching out into that territory. So I'm interested in exploring some options there as well. Part of what um, the mayor and his team and I have been talking about is prioritizing the types of applications that we would like to pursue and working on schedules for those. Uh, the CDBG Community Development Block Grants, we can apply once a year for those grants, which is coming up in January through March is the application period. For construction projects, we can ask for up to $200,000. For water and wastewater projects, we can ask for up to a million. Although the less we ask for, the more likely we are to be approved. We don't need to record that part. <laughs> so we do actually have, um, for the water and wastewater applications, they have to go through a separate committee before we can even submit the application, which is called the WAC, the WWAC. Fortunately, Eureka Springs is in the position of having a pre-approved um, plan that has already been through the WAC last year and has approval to be submitted as an application. So that was very exciting news when we discovered that. But we have several um, application ideas in the hopper, uh, not just for the community development, development block grants, for, but for other grant opportunities as well. Um, again, my agency, that's my job, is to help cities and counties in the Northwest Arkansas area be sure they're applying for all the grants that they might be eligible for and to write the best applications that I can. That's, that's my job and I'm really excited and happy to do it. Um, I was a ghost tour guide for a while, so I love, I love Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to work with Mayor Bear's team to uh, coordinate priorities. I think that that will be an important strategy to help make sure Eureka rings um, every opportunity for grant applications, especially as the city is growing, which is great news, and it will also disqualify you for some grants that you can apply for now, so we're thinking about that as well. In the grant application process, part of my job, too, is to be sure that we're compliant with all the HUD regulations, and these CDBG grants are administered through HUD. So what that entails is passing some resolutions in the city council, which you may have done. I need to check your file and see if we need to do those again. Um, but we'll get back to you with that information if it's necessary, and I'll send you sample or not ordinances, sample resolutions, so that you can get the feel and ask me plenty of questions. I brought my cards, um, and then we'll also need to pass a resolution um, giving the mayor the authority to apply to HUD for these funds. So um, you will be seeing me again, but I'll send you all an email or send an email 
through Kim to let you guys all know what those resolutions will look like so that you'll have a heads up and plenty of time to ask me questions. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Oh, we're real excited to have you on board. I'm You're to just, be here. She's a great uh, asset, uh, part of the team, and, and uh, for our economic development. Uh, we've been looking forward to this for uh, a long time. Well, I'm um, delighted, and I'm happy to be of service. Don't hesitate to call or email um, with any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. That brings us to uh, public comments. Uh, my name is Bill Reed. Uh, I own and operate the food trailer, the soup shack up there on 62 across from O'Reilly's. Uh, about two years ago, I went through the lottery and was authorized to open it and uh, run it. I was just going to rent a place, but I couldn't find anybody who wanted to put their trailer in there, our truck. So I wound up, I uh, found this uh, trailer over in Fayetteville and purchased it. Did a lot of uh, redevelopment there, put in underground utilities, put in lights, uh, sealed re and uh, restriped the uh, parking lot, put in bumper pads, covered up that big hole with a, a nice grate, uh, keep some buyer from running into it with their car and killing themselves. Anyway, long story short, I would like to continue to operate my business. I really need to because I've got a big loan from Equity Bank I need to pay for. There are some benefits to the city of uh, Eureka Springs. I've outlined those. You should have a copy of that in your, your folder there. But, uh, you know, if taxes are important and you're getting a portion of that, I don't know how much. I didn't check into that. We provide a service to uh, not only the local people, but also a lot of tourists out there. In fact, most of our business is from tourists. Uh, it was an eyesore, and now it's a nice-looking business uh, location. Um, I employ one person, a single mother, who lives in Eureka Springs, to provide her livelihood so she can live. We buy all our supplies, almost 100%, from Hearts and other places here locally, and the loans from Equity Bank, so that provides uh, business for them as well. So I respectfully request that uh, the ordinance governing the food trucks and trailers, I think most of them are trailers, but uh, be amended. And here's what I request. Eliminate the annual lottery, thus allowing any food truck or trailer that the council has approved for business and is currently in operation to continue to operate at the current place of business. It'd be just the same as for any other business in town. You know, I pay my uh, annual uh, uh, permit fees or whatever you want to call it, business operation fees. You know, I go through a health inspection every year with the county health department. You have to get information and get approved by the, the state in order to do these things. Went through a lot of gyrations in order to get this all set up. And uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I redevelop properties. I like to do that. And I think uh, what we've done up there with the uh, fabric shop on, on one side and the food truck on the other side uh, is very very nice and certainly an asset to the city and if you knew what it looked like before you know what I'm talking about. So anyway I believe that the uh, Quilters Cottage, my wife's operation and the soup shack are indicative of the quality of uh, development that I do and definitely are assets to the city of Eureka Springs and we only uh, have had positive comments uh, concerning both businesses. So I respectfully request that you consider my uh, request tonight and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll start off with our new business. We've got a, a uh, council vacancy. Motion to discuss. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Um, Green. Motion. Oh, I'll make a motion to discuss. Get second. I'll second that. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Green. Um, what What is, um, I, I know we're going to probably fill a vacancy. What is the protocol for doing it? Do we have any other applicants for this vacancy, Ann? Any, anybody else still there have Marie? I don't know of anyone who has them. Okay. Uh, so we can fill it with... Is, we, is we can fill it or we can just wait until okay. a month. All right. Mr. Myers, are you willing to step up to the plate right now? Yeah, to check. Now he will be in a different position. 
Same they went ward. same ward, right? Oh. Mickey. <clears throat> Same same position. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay, Mickey. Um, I I just would advise we check the legalities since something that happened ten years ago. It took two years to find out we had made an illegal action. So let's check on it because I know if there's more than a year, you have a special election. If there's less than a year, the council appoints. When there's one meeting left, I don't know that there's anything. So I would ask the city attorney. I know the answer, but Mr. Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I know of no restriction that says you cannot fill the position. Okay. okay. Mr. Thomas? I just, in the past when we've had, a, had an open position, Tim, you've always told us that it had to be filled at the next meeting after it was announced. So what, what, I mean, to me that says it has to be filled tonight. Well, it has to be filled if a proper vote can be taken. You have to still get the proper number of okay. right. the remaining seats right. to vote for a particular individual. But yes. But if we did not attempt to fill it tonight, wouldn't we be violating this law that we've always told us says we have to try at the next meeting? You're supposed to, why I understand it, to try. Mm -hmm. Mr. McClellan? Um, <coughs> excuse me. No offense to Mr. Meyer, but, but I mean, if, if this is what we're going to do, then I think we need to, if you're going to try and fill it, it's in all fairness you need to let all the general public know and let them have an opportunity if somebody want to sit in it for a meeting or two, which is, that's all there's going to be, so... I mean, I, I don't, and not that anybody would, but uh, I don't want to give somebody a reason to complain either. And so I just, you know, we've got really one De December meeting, unless we decide to have two, but usually it's just one in December. And, and so, so, you know, it might be, the best thing may be to just let it, why? That's my suggestion. Ms. Green? Well, I, we last week um, declared the vacancy, and Mr. Myers has gracio graciously said he would do it, and I feel that for he, we could put him on at this meeting, and he would be at the next meeting, and, and I would like to have a full council, and he won the election, so why not? put him on. Nobody else has shown up to want it for two meetings. Ms. Schneider? The only problem anybody would have is what Terry was saying. We could get sued. That's the only problem. Ms. Green? Um, this is for Tim. Could we be sued for this? You can be sued for anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Whether we would lose, probably not. We, so you would say probably we would not lose if someone decided to sue us. But you you can sue in our great country anybody for anything. Doesn't mean it will go anywhere. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but but your legal advice is we probably would prevail. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm. I'm going to make a motion that we elect um, Mr. Myers for, I, I believe it's appoint Mr. Myers for position, is it position two, ward three? Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I'll second that. All right, any further discussion? All right, let's have a roll call, please, ma'am. Mickey Schneider. Crutzen. Tom Buford. Yes. Terry McClung. Yeah, why not? I don't think it'll hurt anything. Bob Thomas. Yes. Melissa Green. Yes. Four, zero, one. All right. Ms. Green? I'd like to make a motion that we take a five minute recess and swear Harry in for the meeting. Second. Okay, we need to go get the uh, 
Dr. for motion. So, uh, get a motion to uh, get a second on that? Yeah, she did. All right. All those in favor for a five minute recess, saying five by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Five minute recess. Yeah, okay. Yes. I didn't either. No offense to your I just don't like lawsuits. And this is your recess. No, yeah. Mickey, is your microphone on? All right, we're reconvening um, with a new alderman, Harry Myers, sitting in with us, uh, which will bring us to our first order, or actually revised order of business, the discussion of the food truck. Get a motion to discuss. I'll move to discuss. That's it. All right. Uh, Ms. Green? Well, Ms. Mr. Reed got a hold of me and was, you know, disappointed at, you know, that, did you, were you in the lottery? Had you applied for, yes. okay, that he, he did not get it. What I've noticed, I work across the street from him, is that he's correct. It, it's a very cleaned up, nice situation. He's put a lot of money into it. I, I'm not that familiar with the, the, you know, the ordinances that we did for the lottery. I know that there was a lot of for and against, you know, I remember that. I just find when we have someone, and, and maybe I'm out of line with this, someone who's really put some decent work into something, has fit into the community, is providing a service. I, I, I haven't heard any complaints that he's taken business away from anything. Um, I see a nice little business when I'm there going on. It's very clean, very respectful. So I, I would like to discuss maybe coming up with a solution for this gentleman. Mr. McCrell? Um, a deal's a deal. I mean, it was a, it was a lottery. Everybody knew what it was, and that's in you know that's that's the way it was set up, and you play by the rules. Um, you now, in Mr. Reed's case, um, there's a difference here in the fact that it is owner operated. Uh, it's it's not just it's not it's not something you can hook onto and take off with. It's not set up that way. It's he's got it in there where he, <laughs> you know, it, it would be difficult to pull that thing out of there. So, uh, and and I eat there on a regular basis, and uh, um, you know, in my opinion, that in his situation, he could apply for a business license there uh, if if the building inspector will allow a shed to be used for a business location on Judah Street I don't understand I can't see why this food truck couldn't be allowed to operate as a standalone business because that's what it is it's owner operated and he owns the real estate that it sits on so I think it actually what he's done there would fall under a different category anyway Ms. Snyder? Um, keeping in mind that several years ago, this is not at all the way I had approached council on food truck situations. It seems to me that since his one spot where he's got his truck, just easier than saying trailer, <laughs> since that is his property, it is his truck because he couldn't get it rented out, maybe we need to add a clause to the food truck set up that says owner operated property has first option. That way if he wants to use his property that's been approved for a food truck, he's got first option. If say next year he doesn't feel like messing with it or one of the other food truck people talks to him and offer him a decent amount and he'd rather do that, that should also be his option. Um, I find it very difficult to take an owner property and say you may own it but you can't do it. 
You have to, if you want to do a food truck, you have to go somewhere else. That just doesn't make sense to me. So if we just need to add one little clause that says owner has first option of, of the food truck utilization, then that's what we should do in the meantime because we have approved or, you know, drew the names for somebody else. Something's going to have to be worked out because we can't just shortchange them either. So we need to do some kind of a meeting and work something out, but I don't think it's right to take it away from him. Mr. Thomas? Ask a question of the attorney. When we were discussing food trucks two years ago or whatever, wasn't part of the problem there was one operating in town, but it was operating on a business where they were renting the owner of the business did not own the food truck, and that was the problem. But didn't you say back then that that if somebody owned the restaurant, they could have a food truck right next door to it on their pro on their own property? As an extension of the same business. Okay. This is not the same business that you're talking about in this situation. Oh, okay. <coughs> Anybody else? Hmm. Yes, Mr. Buford. Uh, uh, is it Mr. McClung's idea? I think we get around the problem of trying to uh, you know, not go follow the rules. Could we let him pursue the idea of trying to uh, pursue Mr. McClung's idea? And if he cannot do that, then at the next meeting, come back and try to maybe change this ordinance or whatever. If we think that's if enough people are in favor of that. There may be some issues, and it uh, depends on <clears throat> the building inspector, but having a permanent building, I think you're supposed to have the requirement of having the restrooms. No. But, uh, Sorry. May I? I think it, the state health department, if it's a permanent structure for a restaurant under code, the building code, not the city code, but building codes have to have restrooms. That's something the building this inspector is, would have to say. This is a situation I deal with on a regular basis, and if <coughs> I can fill in some information, I'd be happy to. Uh, um, I don't think, um, <coughs> Ms. McClung, the, the business that I'm referring to on June Street doesn't have any restrooms. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not a restaurant. Well, okay, and it may not be, but at the same time, I don't like the idea of making an ordinance and then going and changing it for somebody that comes along just because you don't like the way the ordinance suits him. That's not the way you do it. I mean, you can't write ordinances for every person that comes that opens a business. <coughs> now, you know, I really believe that his is a case that that being on the property like it is that that he has some grounds to have an established business because it is owner operated and and it's and it's in permanent uh, it's 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 a nicer place than others so I think that's the way to preserve well, I'm, I'm willing to say as Mr. Buford said let the building inspector unless he's got a problem you know and see what he comes up with with building codes I'm fine with that Ms. Snyder? Um, did whoever it was that won the lottery, have they talked to you yet about rental price? Um, nobody was interested in, in moving on the property. I couldn't find anybody locally who would do it. Okay, no, no I mean right now, the, the, the name that was drawn, isn't that for that location? I don't know who they are. No, no, no. no. Okay, no. then I am thoroughly confused. If we have all these places, I, I don't understand. If he applied for a truck at that location and nobody else did, where's, what am I missing here? He did not win the lottery. Okay, so you back up. How many, how many, how many food truck places do we have that we arrange around town? I don't know if I can answer your question. Okay, well, I don't know if I have permission to answer your well, question. question yes, so. Madam Clerk. You, how many clerk? The ordinance states that we're allowed. What two? Eight or and eight Madam eight. Clerk, you know the answer to how many that we're allowed within the, on the highway up there. Two. On two. Highway 62 two. and 23 okay. South, two spots for one truck. 
Okay, I'm confused because we had like eight no. or ten or twelve locations scattered all, right. all over town. None of them were downtown. No. Miss Green? Does the quilt shop have a restroom in it? Yes. Could it be possible that it would be up to the building inspector. Can I okay. Yeah, if you I have a question, have, yes. I've been asking, how many locations do we have? We have more than two locations. We have more than three locations. We have three zones, Nikki. We only have so many positions per, lo per location. Okay, so his property is one of the ones that has been approved by council, right? No. No. Okay, that's where the confusion is coming in. So what you're saying is there's only two places can and they have to have been pre-approved. But this isn't one of them? They have to win the lottery. We had people with property that Mickey, offered their, their land. There were three tickets for two spots. What I'm saying is how do we only have two spots? Because that's how the ordinance was written. And how come I can remember very clearly oh. we had at least 10 different places? I will provide the ordinance <coughs> for you if you'd like. Mr. Buford, the, uh, the ordinance provides you have an A, B, C, and D district, and you have one, you have one food truck in A, one food truck in B, one food truck in C, and two food trucks in D, and they're set up. And D has food truck can be run from, I guess, outside West Bend Viewing, which I guess raises it back all the way up to the East 62, so they cover specific parts. Now, I don't believe anybody applied for a food truck on B, which is from Spring Street to German Alley, so we actually have one less food truck. No. Yes. Yes, yes we did. A lot of it went out, but, but you know, so they're set by zones, and uh, they <coughs> There were two tr food trucks that got approved in D, and he's, I think, in the D, D area. So by the ordinance, you know, he's, he's out of luck unless we change the ordinance to work around something else. All right, any further discussion? Um, Mr. McClung? Do we need a motion, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that, that we uh, defer Mr. Reed to the building inspector to see if we can uh, see if he doesn't meet current guidelines and qualify for a business license. Second. Okay, good. Second. Second. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Will you Green. Second, if he doesn't meet the building inspector, can he come back at the next meeting? We'll come back and notify one way or the other at the next okay. meeting. Okay, that's all I need to yeah. know. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. We will refer this to Bobby Ray. Uh, we get a motion to discuss the uh, ordinance for the animal ordinance. I move to discuss. Let's get a second. Did you? Excuse me. Oh, okay. Tom, did you second? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. So, uh, could, could you Mike. Oh. <laughs> it, that, that you doesn't say that it doesn't really amplify. quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't amplify. Oh. It's just for the, the TV thing. Uh, Ms. Green? Okay, when, when we started all this animal stuff, I was out campaigning and a, a lot of people met me at the doors and they, they liked that we did not make the enclosure smaller, but they talked about they wanted something for inclement weather. So I researched it. I talked to Brian Young today. I talked to Jimmy. We do have something in our ordinance that does include incumbent weather. It's 60405A, no owner shall fail to provide his animals with sufficient good or wholesome food, water, proper shelter, and protection from the weather, uh, on and on. What I wrote, and I'm going to pass out, and Jimmy was happy with them, is just some definitions to go in our definitions so that he has kind of some, some teeth. Do we need that in an ordinance? or? Do right, Pat, would you want to patch those yeah. out? Oh. 
No, he's got one. Oh, I have one. It would... What? Oh, in the book? All right, hold on. Yeah, I'll give you mine. <laughs> Okay, under animal care, um, 6.04.05, under A, no owner shall fail to provide his animal with sufficient good and wholesome food and water, proper shelter and protection from the weather, veterinary care when needed to prevent suffering and with humane care and treatment. And the first line on what I sent you is just, I didn't, I didn't realize that we had it in there because I was told by people who had called with complaints that the police said, no, we don't have anything to cover it, but we do. What, what I gave was a description for inclement weather, um, what considered a dog left outside, and minimum standard shelter. Um, Jimmy was really happy with it because it, it gives a little bit of teeth if he goes. Um, and to talk to someone, you know, there, there is a description, kind of like the enclosure. We had a description that fit that. Ms. Gray, I mean, uh, Ms. Snyder. Um, it's already in there. I don't think we actually need to add any more. And, hmm. and yes, Jimmy liked it, but he also said it's already in there. It's, yeah. I just. I don't see that we need to do any, there's no changing to be done. And when you get more, more extreme, more explicit, mm -hmm. you're just asking for a little more right. trouble. It's already there. Ms. Green? It, it's, it's there, Mickey. What I'm asking to put in is, in the first part, it's descriptions. And, and it explains what things are. And they can be very important in implementing laws. You know, if you'll go, um, if you'll look, that's see. That's what the ACO does on its own. Right, but we have in our books, we have descriptions. And, and I'm asking that we put these descriptions in so that there is a description. Definitions. Yeah, definitions of what we're doing. Uh, I don't know, I'd have to refer to your city attorney, but to your definitions probably need a little bit of work, but it can be handled, I think. But, uh, anybody else? Do you want to make a motion? Um, so I make a motion to add these definitions to our code book. Second. Okay, discussion. Mr. Thomas? Uh, when I, we were talking about the dogs in cars problem. and uh, Developing what? The dogs in cars on hot and cold days. And uh, I spoke with the Fayetteville Police Department about their their ordinance or whatever and they have a specific temperature because basically if you you know when you say extreme cold what's extreme to you might not be extreme to me and uh, so that's really an open area that's that's certainly true today isn't it right mm -hmm. yeah I mean <laughs> that's what I'm saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not sure I know we do have the police department feels comfortable with our dogs locked up um, but I don't know I mean there again I think that's uh, having the temperature range into there we could look in others see what other cities do um, to have that I think that's your what your recommendation is coming up with it with the temperature yeah I mean uh, quite frankly uh, you know what would you do if, yeah. as Tim is always saying how would you do this in court no I agree yeah, yeah. Uh, Ms. Uh, Green? Could I research this and bring it back at the next meeting with, you know, a, a guideline of temperatures or a, a definition of it, a better definition of the temperatures? I think that would probably be a good thing. Uh, and, you know, look and see if you can come up with a definition. I mean, your minimum standard shelter is probably what you're calling an adequate shelter. Right. Uh, but again, what is uh, sufficiently insulated? 
Mm -hmm. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy or said... Or space to change positions. I mean, those are... Right. J Jimmy, when I read this to Jimmy, he liked it. He said, yes. And he said, you know, sufficiently insulated is like either blankets or hay. You know, just something to keep them out of the weather. Well, I think it needs to be defined. Okay. I will come saying. up with better, better definitions. What do you think, Mr. Weaver? If a court was to be called upon to apply these, uh, the more specific, the more likely they are to apply them. Okay. Uh, rather than find that they are insufficient uh, for lack of specificity uh, and throw them out. Okay. So if we could come up with temperatures, types of uh, weatherproofing. Okay. Uh, Something that gives them something to so, hang their hat on. Okay, make make the definitions a little bit more less generic, okay. more specific. Okay, thank you, Ms. Snyder. Um, when it comes to temperature, good luck on that. How are you going to pick a temperature that's going to be fair to all animals, dogs, cats, whatever? Um, and their owners in regards to the I have boxes. They cannot take heat or cold anywhere near an extreme. Okay, 40 degrees, that's it. They're outside for a max of five minutes and their butts are inside. Okay? Oh. If you have a St. Bernard, uh, that's below zero. And they could be out there all day. So how are you going to work this? I mean, this is something to keep in mind. How are you going to work it so it's fair and equitable to all pets? I think that's what uh, Ms. Green's going to do. Yes. Yeah. Well, I will use, like, I'll, I'll look at Fayetteville's. I'll look at some of the ones. A, a lot of states are passing this right now. I will research it and bring it back. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So what about the motion and second that was made? It was a motion to discuss. Okay. I, I, should I just... It was a motion to add definitions to the oh, code book. Right. Okay. Should I remove the motion? Yes. Um, I move to remove the motion. Mr. Buford? Yes. All right. Any further things on this before we move on? No. All right, a resolution for uh, setting a public hearing date for the vacating alley. A motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. I think you guys have a in your packet uh, the petition to uh, vacate uh, an alley up on uh, off of Benton Street, and Midway Street. Uh, and I think what we need to do is, is uh, establish a date for a public hearing. Do six we have weeks would be good. In six weeks? Six weeks would be good because of the time requirements involved. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I'm, what 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 are we referring to here? Uh, item number three: resolution for public hearing date. Uh, sometime in January, I guess would be second uh, meeting date, possibly in January. We're still meeting on Mondays. <coughs> that would work. For the 28th. Okay, this, this is a resolution? We have to have a, a resolution uh, for a public hearing. Okay. Do we need a public a resolution or just a public just, hearing? Just, you know, we need a resolution for a public hearing. It's based on state law. Okay. okay. And we got a resolution in your packet. Okay. So. Okay, then I have one other question, sir. Okay. And what is this in reference to? What? This is where? Benton Street and Midway. Okay. Is this? It's in your packet. Well, I see the I see the resolution. Right, there should be and a. The information a, below it goes below. with it. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I didn't see that. Right behind the old uh, elementary school, that house or uh, it's behind the high school. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. 
find it? I th yeah, I think I'm... Okay. Yeah. So basically what we're needing is just a resolution. If we can get a date, uh, if everybody's comfortable with the 28th of January Okay. for the public hearing. Okay. Ms. Schneider? Can I ask a really stupid question? Okay. <laughs> we run into this all the time. And out of all my zillion years here, we still have all we run into this. When somebody's buying property and they have to get the uh, surveyor thingy, why isn't this showing up? Probably does. All these people that we have had to vacate alleys had no idea there was an alley in the middle of the property. Why isn't this showing up? I don't get it. Mickey, I can't answer that question. All I can talk about is what we're dealing with right now. Okay. You have to talk to me. You can talk to Mr. Tapia to find out. Who? The owner of this property. Mickey, we're dealing with this issue, oh, please, ma'am. You're a realtor. How come Allie's don't show up on the property line? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. If he's if he's not going to take your question, if, if he's not going to do it, I'm not going to. Make it. Let's continue on. We'll talk about it after this, please. I move to assign the resolution a number for a public hearing and read it into passage. Second. All right. Got a motion and second to assign this a number and read for approval. Yes. Uh, I'm not opposed to the idea of doing this, but this is the first time that I recall ever doing this to do a public hearing. But if that's what the process you want to follow, that's all right with me. I don't care. So we usually just set a public I hearing the way the we question. go. All right. Madam Clerk? In the past, when parks was more a part of the process, there was a public hearing, but it was held by the Planning Commission, so they were doing this step. Now the parks only gives the nod as to whether it will be part of the trail system or not. This part falls to this group. They did it by resolution? No, but they did the public hearing, and state law actually calls for this process that is now being used with the changes in having, with council having taken that back from parks. Yeah, it's, it's no big deal. I just, it's nothing that I was, it's, I've ever been familiar it with. It is the first time. The it is the first time. Okay. Yeah. So, further discussion? I'd just like Mr. to Thomas? point out that there are, there's four statements in there from four owners asking for, for the vacation, but the, app, the official application only has two names on it. Is that a problem? They're all on there. There's not, I see two names on here. There's One of them is the representative. And then there's four property owner statements. Two. There's four on this one, but only three on this one. I see what you're saying. I'll make sure I understand what the specifics on that are. Oh. In the, on this piece of paper where it shows, you know, there, it's a triplex. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, and on this, it this right. in your bundle, it explains who is where. Right, but, but their names are not on the application. That's true, and I'll make sure that I understand who actually holds the deeds. Mm -hmm. I think at this point all we're doing is setting a resolution to set the public hearing, so I think we're still okay with that. Aren't we, Mr. Attorney? That appears to be what is being requested at this time, yes. Okay. Further discussion? All right. You know, roll call then? Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yeah. Mr. Buford? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. 6-0.
The resolution number will be 742, a resolution to set a public hearing date for consideration of vacating an alley in Block 22 of the Freeman Edition. Well, as the property owner of part of Lot 3 and all property owners of part of Lot 3 and all of Lot 4 and Block 22 of the Freeman Edition have submitted a petition to the City of Eureka Springs to vacate an unopened alley running north and south between Lots 3 and 4 and whereas the signed petition was submitted to the Council in regular session on November 26, 2018 along with a copy of the plat showing the streets and adjoining lots and whereas Arkansas Code annotated 14301302C provides that the City Council shall by resolution fix a day for the hearing of the petition filed to vacate a street or alley and whereas the law further directs the City Clerk to give notice of the meeting by publication once per week for two consecutive weeks in some newspaper published in Carroll County, Arkansas and having general circulation in the city. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the petition to vacate the above described alley is the petition to vacate the above described alley is set for a hearing on January was it 28th? 28th. 2019 at 6 p.m. in the auditorium lobby of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and the city clerk shall give notice of this meeting by publication as set forth by Arkansas Code Annotated 14301302C. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, I do have a question. In looking at this plat, if it's not out of line, uh, I assume it's it's the alley between three and four. Correct. Is that really where the correct? building is a, is a encroachment? As the encroachment. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. That's all. All right. Uh, okay. Get a motion to discuss the ordinance regarding collection of expenditures for cleanup. So moved. Second. All right. This uh, came up. Uh, actually, Mr. Buford and I had talked about this a while back. Uh, and this is a method for us. Uh, and we. To collect monies that we've expended for cleaning up property or for repair uh, of uh, properties such as sidewalks uh, without having to go through and placing a lien on people's properties. Uh, the problem we have, of course, we most of us know is by placing a lien on some of the properties, uh, sometimes those liens will always stay there until somebody decides they want to sell the property. And some of these properties are in trusts and, and just won't ever be sold. So this gives us an opportunity to uh, go through the city council uh, and then after city council approval and notice and publication in the newspapers to be able to take the amount of money that we expend for cleaning up the property or uh, expense we have in um, mitigation hazardous uh, situations of property and put them on their property tax so they'll be forced to pay it in the next property tax assessment uh, and then the city or the county tax collector gets uh, gets a percentage of that uh, and then they go ahead and forward the amount to the city council or to the city for that so I wanted to bring this to you guys to look at. Uh, we need to talk about it at the next meeting. Uh, I'm not sure you all ready and looked it over. But I want you to look at it. Uh, this has always been a problem we've had with uh, anything that we do uh, on properties. And we, we gave the building of, official several months ago some money for uh, clean up the weed lots. But the only method that we have of recollecting the money expended is to file a lien against it. And so this gives us the opportunity now to be able to put it on their property tax. And we'll be assured that we get paid. Ms. Snyder? Um, that sounds awesome. But I have one question in regards to what if it's like $50,000 
I know I personally wouldn't be able to come up with something like that. What if they can't come up with it to pay their tax? What happens? It gets sold. Okay, so that's one of those things where they go out on the stairway and they sell it off. And so we would get our money from that. Correct. And if it sells for 10000 are we just out of luck? Probably. Okay. Um, would there be a possibility if it's over a certain amount that they could pay, if it's 50000 let's say, uh, you know, 25000 twice, you know, two years in a row, or 10000 five in a row, something. And are we going to consider anything like that? The council has the opportunity uh, because we'll be notifying the property owners of any of the work, and they have the opportunity to repair the work and take the work and do it themselves. If they don't do it, uh, and we decide to go ahead and do it, then it comes before the council. And then the council, my understanding, uh, is the ones who determines uh, to take it on to the uh, file with the county clerk. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So at that point, you know, we could hear anything. Okay, so I'm assuming the council can, can work it out. Yeah, work out any deal that they want. You would not be able to divide it over several years and place each one on the tax roll, yeah. but you could place a percentage on the tax roll and percentage by lien or some other method if you thought it was too great of a burden for the property owner. Thank you. Ms. Green? Uh, um, I agree with Mickey. I think this is, is awesome. It probably needs a little tweaking. You know, we've had the problem over the years of these demo by neglects where the people are out of town, they're avoiding any citations, any letters, and they just let the property deteriorate. So if we could go in, put a tax lien on them, it wakes them up. And in the case of like Nine Prospect, once he was kind of, the owner was kind of pushed to the wall that this house was doing by neglect, he put it up and sold it and it's now going to be a gorgeous residence. They are working on it as we speak. So I like this. I think it has some teeth to it. Mr. McClellan? So if it, if it goes to the tax collector and it's not paid, does it, does it then go to the state uh, uh, land commissioner and get sold? After three that years, way, is that is that the way it follows that process? Right. Once it's turned over to them, it's in their hands, and then when it sells, then they then they pay yeah. the deficit. Well, okay. Because traditionally, when those sell at auction, they sell for <clears throat> they take no less than what the face value is. Well, they also have a lot of, they have minimum, they've got their taxes that's, that's on there too. It's not just... Well, that's, I understand that, but I, and that may be all that they may still require. I don't know. Do you know how that works, Tim? If, if it's part of the tax bill whenever they sell it, uh, when the state sells it, does it, they still try to cover that too, or? From the way I read the uh, enabling legislation from the state, it would be simply... Uh, included in the full amount. So they would try to sell that as the minimum for the property. Yeah, that's 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 what they do. They they usually sell for I mean, they price it in at the minimum. All right. May not bring it. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, again, uh, we'll bring this up the next council meeting for discussion. I just want to bring this up for y'all for review on there. Um all right, that uh, unfinished business, uh, we have none. So that brings us to agenda setting. Anybody got anything for the agenda for next month? All right, hearing none, uh, city council comments. Mr. Thomas, start on your end. Being chairperson is, is a very difficult job, and I appreciate all the effort that you put into it. But everybody at the table has something to say and everybody else thinks it's either important or it's silly. But we all get a chance to talk. And I really didn't appreciate the way you shushed up the, the city clerk. She is a, an important member of the city administration and she does have some knowledge to bring to the table. 
Ms. Green? I would like to welcome our newest member to council. I'm excited. I think he's going to be great. And other than that, everybody, the town looks great. Ms. Snyder? Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> Mr. Buford, no comment. Mr. Meyer. I uh, hope I can live here. up to everyone's expectations. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> Mr. McClellan. Uh, no comment. All right. Uh, we have uh, events coming up the uh, next several weeks. We have the Christmas parade Friday. Um, yeah, that's November the 30th, starting at 6 p.m., starting at the library, and we'll be going down uh, through Spring Street, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. On December the 1st, we'll have Santa and the fire department uh, in the park from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the Basin Park. And December 1st, also, we'll have the candlelight tour of homes from 3 to 8 p.m. Uh, and you can see the Historical Museum or the Chamber of Commerce for tickets. And also on the 1st will be John Two Hawks, Two Hawks concert uh, from 7 to 9 at the Odd. And December the 6th, 52nd annual Silver Tea from 1.30 to 3.30 at the Crescent Hotel. And on December the 8th, we'll have a night of merrymaking and living windows from 5 to 8 p.m. in the downtown. And then also that night, eight uh, on the 8th, we'll have the Ozark Corral concert, 7.30 p.m. at the Odd. Uh, and that's all I have. I can get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, so move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. That was, that was Right, we're reconvening uh, with a new alderman, Harry Myers, sitting in with us, uh, which will bring us to our first order, or actually revised order of business, is the discussion of the food truck. Get a motion to discuss? I'll move to discuss. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Ms. Green? Well, Mr. Mr. Reed got a hold of me and was, you know, disappointed at you know that did you were you in the lottery had you applied for yes. okay that he he did not get it what i've noticed i work across the street from him is that he's correct it, it's a very cleaned up nice situation he's put a lot of money into it I, i'm not that familiar with the the you know the ordinances that we did for the lottery i know that there was a lot of for and against you know, I remember that. I just find when we have someone, and, and maybe I'm out of line with this, someone who's really put some decent work into something, has fit into the community, is providing a service. I, I, I haven't heard any complaints that he's taken business away from anything. Um, I see a nice little business when I'm there going on. It's very clean, very respectful. So I, I would like to discuss maybe coming up with a solution for this gentleman. Mr. McCrow? Um A deal's a deal. I mean, it was a, it was a lottery... Everybody knew what it was, and that's in you know that's that's the way it was set up, and you play by the rules. Um, you now, in Mr. Reed's case, um, there's a difference here in the fact that it is owner operated. Uh, it's it's not just it's not it's not something you can hook onto and take off with. It's not set up that way. It's he's got it in there where he, <laughs> it, you know it, it would be difficult to pull that thing out of there. So uh, and and I eat there on a regular basis. And uh, um, you know, in my opinion, that in his situation he could apply for a business license there uh, if if the building inspector will allow a shed to be used for a business location 
on Judah Street. I don't understand. I can't see why this food truck couldn't be allowed to operate as a standalone business because that's what it is. It's owner operated, and he owns the real estate that it sits on. So I think. It actually, what he's done there would fall under a different category anyway. Ms. Snyder? Um, keeping in mind that several years ago, this is not at all the way I had approached council on food truck situations. It seems to me that since his one spot where he's got his truck, just easier than saying trailer, <laughs> Since that is his property, it is his truck because he couldn't get it rented out, maybe we need to add a clause to the food truck setup that says owner-operated property has first option. That way, if he wants to use his property that's been approved for a food truck, he's got first option. If, say, next year... He doesn't feel like messing with it or one of the other food truck people talks to him and offer him a decent amount and he'd rather do that. That should also be his option. Um, I find it very difficult to take an owner property and say I, you may own it but you can't do it. You have to, if you want to do a food truck, you have to go somewhere else. That just doesn't make sense to me. So if we just need to add one little clause that says owner has first option of, of the food truck utilization then that's what we should do in the meantime because we have approved or you know drew the names for somebody else something's going to have to be worked out because we can't just shortchange them either so we need to do some kind of a meeting and work something out but I don't think it's right to take it away from him Mr. Thomas ask a question of the attorney when we were discussing food trucks two years ago or whatever wasn't part of the problem there was one operating in town but it was operating on a business where they were renting the owner of the business did not own the food truck and that was the problem but didn't you say back then that that if somebody owned the restaurant they could have a food truck right next door to it on their pro on their own property as an extension of the same business. Okay. This is not the same business that you're talking about in this situation. Oh, okay. <coughs> Anybody else? Mm. Yes, Mr. Buford. Uh, uh, is it Mr. McClung's idea? I think we get around the problem of trying to uh, you know, not go follow the rules. Could we let him pursue the idea of trying to uh, pursue Mr. McClung's idea and if he cannot do that then at the next meeting come back and try to maybe change this ordinance or whatever if we think that's if enough people are in favor of that there may be some issues and it uh, depends on <coughs> the building inspector but having a permanent building I think you're supposed to have a requirement of having the restrooms no but, uh, sorry may I I think it, the state health department, if it's a permanent structure for a restaurant under code, the building code, not the city code, but building codes have to have restrooms. So that's I, something the building inspector would have to say. This is a situation I deal with on a regular basis, and if <coughs> I can fill in some information, I'd be happy to. Uh, um, I don't think, um, <coughs> Mr. McClung, the... The business that I'm referring to on Judah Street doesn't have any restrooms. Not, it's, it's not, not a restaurant. Well, okay. And, and it may not be. But at the same time, I don't like the idea of making an ordinance and then going and changing it for somebody that comes along just because you don't like the way the ordinance suits him. That's not the way you do it. I mean, you can't write ordinances for every person that comes that opens a business. <coughs> now, you know, I really believe that his is a case that that being on the property like it is that that he has some grounds to have an established business because it is owner operated and and it's and it's in permanent. Uh, it's 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 a nicer place than others, so. 
I think that's the way to preserve well, it. I'm, I'm willing to say, as Mr. Buford said, let the building inspector, unless he's got a problem, you know, and see what he comes up with with building codes. I'm fine with that. Mr. Snyder? Um, did whoever it was that won the lottery, have they talked to you yet about rental price? Um, nobody was interested in, in moving on the property. I couldn't find anybody locally who would do it. Okay, no, no I mean right now, the, the, the name that was drawn, isn't that for that location? I don't know who they are. No, no, no. no. Okay, no. then I am thoroughly confused. If we have all these places, I, I don't understand. If he applied for a truck at that location and nobody else did, where's... What am I missing here? He did not win the lottery. Okay, so you back up. How many, how many, how many food truck places do we have that we arrange around town? I don't know if I can answer your question. Okay, well, I don't know if I have permission to answer your well, question. A question so. Yes, Madam Clerk. You, how many clerk? The ordinance states that we're allowed. What two? Eight or and ten Madam eight. Clerk, you know the answer to how many? And we're allowed within the, on the highway up there. Two. On Highway two. 62 two. and 23 okay. South, two spots for one truck. Okay, I'm confused because we get like eight no. or ten or twelve locations scattered all, right. all over town. None of them were downtown. Yeah, no. Miss Green. Does the quilt shop have a restroom in it? Yes. Could it be possible that? That'd be up to the building inspector. Can I okay. Yeah, if you I have a question, have, yes. I've been asking how many locations do we have? We have more than two locations. We have more than three locations. We have three zones, Mickey. We only have so many positions per, lo per location. Okay, so his property is one of the ones that has been approved by council, right? No. No. Okay, that's where the confusion is coming in. So what you're saying is there's only two places can and they have to be pre-approved. But this isn't one of them? They have to win the lottery. We had people with that Mickey, offered their, their land. There were three tickets for two spots. What I'm saying is how do we only have two spots? Because that's how the ordinance was written. Then how come I can remember very clearly yeah. we had at least ten different places? I will provide the ordinance <coughs> for you if you'd like. Mr. Buford. The, uh, the ordinance provides you have an A, B, C, and D district, and you have one you have one food truck in A, one food truck in B, one food truck in C, and two food trucks in D, and they're set up. And D has food truck can be run from, I guess, outside West Van Buren, which I guess raises are back all the way up to the East 62. So... They cover specific parts. Now, I don't believe anybody applied for a food truck on B, which is from Spring Street to German Alley. So we actually have one less food truck. No. Yes. Yes, yes we did. A lot of it went out, but, but you know, so they're set by zones. And uh, there, are, <coughs> there were two tr food trucks that got approved in D, and he's, I think, in the D, D area. So by the ordinance, you know, he's... He's out of luck unless we change the owners to work around something else. All right. Any further discussion? Um, Mr. Mr. McClung? Do we need a motion, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, defer Mr. Reed to the building inspector to see if we can uh, see if he doesn't meet current guidelines and qualify for a business license. Second. Okay, good second. Second. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Green. Does, if he doesn't meet the building inspector, can he come back at the next meeting? We'll come back and notify one way or the other at the next okay. meeting. Okay, that's all I need to yeah. know. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. We will refer this to Bobby Ray. Uh, we get a motion to discuss the 
Ordinance for the animal ordinance. I move to discuss. Is there a second? Yeah. Uh, Why, uh, did you? Mr. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Tom, did you second? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. So, uh, could, could you? Mike. Oh. <laughs> that that, you that doesn't amplify. That doesn't really amplify. quietly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't amplify. Oh. It's just for the the TV thing. Uh, Ms. Green. Okay, when, when we started all this animal stuff, I was out campaigning and a, a lot of people met me at the doors and they, they liked that we did not make the enclosure smaller, but they talked about they wanted something for inclement weather. So I researched it. I talked to Brian Young today. I talked to Jimmy. We do have something in our ordinance that does include incumbent weather it's 60405A no owner shall fail to provide his animals with sufficient good or wholesome food water proper shelter and protection from the weather uh, on and on what I wrote and I'm going to pass out and Jimmy was happy with them is just some definitions to go in our definitions so that he has kind of some some teeth do we need that in an ordinance or do uh, Pat, would you want to patch yeah. that? Right. Oh. No, he's got one. Oh, I have one. It would what? Oh, in the book. All right, hold on. Yeah, I'll give you mine. <laughs> Okay, under animal care, um, 60405, under A, no owner shall fail to provide his animal with sufficient good and wholesome food and water, proper shelter and protection from the weather, veterinary care when needed to prevent suffering and with humane care and treatment. And the first line on what I sent you is just, I didn't, I didn't realize that we had it in there because I was told by people who had called with complaints that the police said no we don't have anything to cover it but we do what what I gave was a description for inclement weather um, what considered a dog left outside and minimum standard shelter um, Jimmy was really happy with it because it, it gives a little bit of teeth if he goes um, and to talk to someone you know there there is a description kind of like the enclosure we had a description that fit that. Ms. Gray, I mean, uh, Ms. Snyder. Um, it's already in there. I don't think we actually need to add any more. And mm. yes, Jimmy liked it, but he also said it's already in there. It's, yeah. I just, I don't see that we need to do any, there's no changing to be done. And when you get more, more extreme, more explicit, mm -hmm. you're just asking for a little more right. trouble. It's already there. Ms. Green? It, it's, it's there, Mickey. What I'm asking to put in is, in the first part, it's descriptions. And, and it explains what things are. And they can be very important in implementing laws. You know, if you'll go, um, if you'll look, that's see. That's what the ACO does on its own. Right, but we have in our books, we have descriptions. And, and I'm asking that we put these descriptions in so that there is a description. Definitions. Yeah, definitions of what we're doing. Uh, I don't know, I'd have to refer to your city attorney, but to your definitions probably need a little bit of work, but it can be handled, I think. But, uh, anybody else? You want to make a motion? Um, so I make a motion to add these definitions to our code book. Uh, second. Okay. Discussion, Mr. Thomas. Uh, when I we were talking about the dogs and cars problem, 
and uh, developing what the dogs in cars during on hot and cold days, and uh, I spoke with the Fayetteville Police Department about their their ordinance or whatever, and they have a specific temperature because basically, if you you know when you say extreme cold, what's extreme to you might not be extreme to me, and uh, so that's really an open area. That's that's certainly true today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I know we do have the police department feels comfortable with our dogs locked up, uh, but I don't know. I mean, there again, I think that's uh, having the temperature range into there. We could look in others, see what other cities do um, to have that. I think that's your what your recommendation is coming up with the, with the temperature. Yeah, I mean, uh, quite frankly. Uh, you know what would you do? If, yeah. As Tim is always saying, how would you do this in court? No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Uh, Green, could I research this and bring it back at the next meeting with, you know, a, a guideline of temperatures or a definition of it, a better definition of the temperatures? I think that'd probably be a good thing, uh, and you know, look and see if you can come up with a definition. I mean, your minimum standard shelter is probably what you're calling an adequate shelter, right? Uh, but again, what is uh, sufficiently insulated? Mm -hmm. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy or said space to change positions. I mean, those are right. J Jimmy, when I read this to Jimmy, he liked it. He said yes. And he said, you know, sufficiently insulated is like either blankets or hay, you know, just something to keep them out of the weather. Well, yeah, I think it needs to be defined. Okay. I will I'm come saying. up with better, better definitions. What do you think, Mr. Weaver? If a court was to be called upon to apply these, uh, the more specific, the more likely they are to apply them. Okay. Uh, rather than find that they are insufficient uh, f for lack of specificity uh, and throw them out. Okay. So if we could come up with temperatures, types of uh, weatherproofing, okay. uh, something that gives them something to so, hang their hat on. Okay. Make, make the definitions a little bit more. Less generic or okay. specific. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Snyder? Um, when it comes to temperature, good luck on that. How are you going to pick a temperature that's going to be fair to all animals, dogs, cats, whatever? Um, and their owners, in regards to the I have boxes, they cannot take heat or cold. And we're near an extreme, okay, 40 degrees, that's it. They're outside for a max of five minutes and everybody's are inside. Okay? Oh. You have a St. Bernard? Uh, that's below zero. And they could be out there all day. So how are you going to work this? I mean, this is something to keep in mind. How are you going to work it so it's fair and equitable to all pets? I think that's what uh, Miss Green's going to do. Yes. Yeah. Well, I will use like I'll, I'll look at Fayetteville's. I'll look at some of the ones. A, a lot of states are passing this right now. I will research it and bring it back. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, what about the motion and second that was made? There was a motion to discuss. Okay. I, I, should I just? It was a motion to add definitions to the oh, code book. Okay. okay. Should I remove the motion? Yes. Um, I move to remove the motion. Mr. Buford. Yes. All right. Any further things on this before we move on? No. All right. A resolution for uh, setting a public hearing date for the vacating alley. A motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. I think you guys have a in your packet. Uh, the petition to uh, vacate uh, an alley up on uh, off of Benton Street, Midway Street, uh, and I think what we need to do is is uh, establish a date for a public hearing. Do we six have weeks? Would be good. In six weeks. Six weeks would be good because of the time requirements involved. Okay. Uh, I'm 
sorry, Mr. Mayor. I'm, what 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 are we referring to here? Uh, item number three, resolution for public hearing date. Uh, sometime in January, I guess would be second uh, meeting date, possibly in January. We're still meeting on Mondays. <coughs> that would work. For the 28th. Okay, this, this is a resolution? We have to have a, a resolution uh, for a public hearing. Doctor, do we need a public a resolution or just a public just hearing? Just, you know, we need a resolution for a public hearing. It's based on state law. Okay. And we got a resolution in your packet. Okay. So. Okay, then I have one other question, sir. Okay. And what is this in reference to? What? This is where? Benton Street and Midway. Terry. Is this? It's in your packet. Well, I see the I see the resolution. Well, there should be and a. The information a, below it goes with it. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I didn't. See that. Right behind the old uh, elementary school, that house or uh, it's behind the high school. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's find it. I th yeah, I think I'm. Okay. Uh, okay. So basically, what we're needing is just a resolution. If we can get a date. Uh, Everybody's comfortable with the 28th of January okay. for the public hearing. Okay. Ms. Schneider? Can I ask a really stupid question? Okay. <laughs> we run into this all the time. And out of all my billing years here, we still have all we run into this. When somebody's buying property, and they have to get the uh, surveyor thingy. Why isn't this showing up? Probably does. All these people that we have had to vacate alleys had no idea there was an alley in the middle of the property. Why isn't this showing up? I don't get it. <coughs> Mickey, I can't answer that question. All I can talk about is what we're dealing with right now. Okay. You'll have to Here's talk to me. You can talk to Mr. Tapia to find out. Who? The owner of this property. Oh, yeah. We've had so many I don't get Mickey, we're dealing with this issue, please, ma'am. You're a realtor. How come Allie don't show up on the property line? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. If he's if he's not going to take your quick, if, if he's not going to do it, I'm not going to. Mickey, let's... Continue on. We'll talk about it after this, please. I move to assign the resolution and number for a public hearing and read it into passage. Second. All right. Got a motion and second to assign this number and read for approval. Yes. Uh, I'm not opposed to the idea of doing this, but this is the first time that I recall ever doing this to do a public hearing. But... If that's what well, the process you want to follow, that's all right. Me, I don't care. So we usually just set a public hearing the way the we question. go. All right, Madam Clerk. In the past, when parks was more a part of the process, there was a public hearing, but it was held by the Planning Commission, so they were doing this step. Now the parks only gives the nod as to whether it will be part of the trail system or not, this part falls to this group. They did it by resolution? No, but they did the public hearing and state law actually calls for this process that is now being used with the changes in having, with council having taken that back from parks. Yeah, it's, it's no big deal. I just, it's nothing that I was, it's, I've ever been familiar it with. It is the first time. The it is the first time. Okay. Yeah. So. Further discussion? I'd just like Mr. to Thomas? point out that there are there's four statements in there from four owners asking for for the vacation, but the app, the official application only has two names on it. Is that a problem? They're all on there. There's not 
I see two names on here. One of them is the representative. And then there's four property owner statements. Two. I see what you're saying. I'll make sure I understand what the specifics on that are. Oh. In the, on this piece of paper where it shows, you know, there, it's a triplex. Yeah, yeah that's... This and on this, this right. in your bundle, it explains who is where. Right, but, but their names are not on the application. That's true, and I'll make sure that I understand who actually holds the deeds. Mm -hmm. I think at this point all we're doing is setting a resolution to set the public hearing, so I think we're still okay with that. Aren't we, Mr. Attorney? That appears to be what is being requested at this time, yes. Okay. Further discussion? All right. You know, roll call then? Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yeah. Mr. Buford? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. 6 0. The resolution number will be 742. A resolution to set a public hearing date for consideration of vacating an alley in Block 22 of the Freeman Edition. Whereas well, the property owner of part of Lot 3 and all property owners of part of Lot 3 and all of Lot 4 and Block 22 of the Freeman Edition have submitted a petition to the City of Eureka Springs to vacate an unopened alley running north and south between Lots 3 and 4 and whereas the signed petition was submitted to the Council in regular session on November 26, 2018 along with a copy of the plat showing the streets and adjoining lots and Whereas Arkansas Code Annotated 14301302C provides that the City Council shall by resolution fix a day for the hearing of the petition filed to vacate a street or alley and whereas the law further directs the City Clerk to give notice of the meeting by publication once per week for two consecutive weeks in some newspaper published in Carroll County, Arkansas and having general circulation in the city. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the petition to vacate the above described alley is the petition to vacate the above described alley is set for a hearing on January was it 28th? 28th. 2019 at 6 p.m. in the auditorium lobby of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and the city clerk shall give notice of this meeting by publication as set forth by Arkansas Code Annotated 14301302C. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, I do have a question. In looking at this plat, if it's not out of line, uh, I assume it's it's the alley between three and four. Correct. Is that uh, where the right? building is a, is a encroachment? As the encroachment. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. That's all. All right. Uh, okay, get a motion to discuss the ordinance regarding collection of expenditures for cleanup. So moved. Second. All right. This uh, came up. Uh, actually, Mr. Buford and I talked about this a while back. Uh, and this is a method for us. Uh, and we to collect monies that we've expended for cleaning up property or for repair uh, of uh, properties such as sidewalks uh, without having to go through and placing a lien on people's properties. Uh, the problem we have, of course, we most of us know is by placing a lien on some of the properties, uh, sometimes those liens will always stay there until somebody decides they want to sell the property. And some of these properties are in trusts and, and just won't ever be sold. So this gives us an opportunity to uh, go through the city council uh, and then after city council approval and notice and publication in the newspapers to be able to take the amount of money that we expend for cleaning up the property or uh, expense we have in uh, mitigation, hazardous uh, 
situations of property and put them on their property tax. So they'll be forced to pay it in the next property tax assessment. Uh, and then the city or the county tax collector gets uh, gets a percentage of that, uh, and then they go ahead and forward the amount to the city council or to the city for that. So I wanted to bring this to you guys to look at. Uh, we need to talk about it at the next meeting. Uh, I'm not sure y'all ready and looked it over, but I want you to look at it. Uh, this has always been a problem we've had with uh, anything that we do uh, on properties. And we, we gave the building of, official several months ago some money for uh, cleaning up of weed lots. But the only method that we have of recollecting the money expended is to file a lien against it. And so this gives us the opportunity now to be able to put it on their property tax and we'll be assured that we can get paid. Ms. Snyder? Um, that sounds awesome, but I have one question in regards to what if it's like $50,000? I know I personally wouldn't be able to come up with something like that. What if they can't come up with it to pay their tax? What happens? It gets sold. Okay, so that's one of those things where they go out on the stairway and they sell it off, and so we would get our money from that. Correct. And if it sells for ten thousand, are we just out of luck? Probably. Okay. Um, would there be a possibility if it's over a certain amount that they could pay? If it's about fifty thousand, let's say, uh, you know, twenty-five thousand twice, you know, two years in a row, or ten thousand five in a row, something? And are we? Consider anything like that? The council has the opportunity uh, because we'll be notifying the property owners of any of the work and they have the opportunity to repair the work and take the work and do it themselves. If they don't do it uh, and we decide to go ahead and do it, then it comes before the council and then the council, my understanding, uh, is the ones who determine uh, to take it on to the uh file with the county clerk. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So at that point, you know, we could hear anything. Okay, so I'm assuming the council can, can, can work it out. Yeah, work out any deal that they want. Okay. You would not be able to divide it over several years and place each one on the tax roll. Yeah. But you could place a percentage on the tax roll and percentage by lien or some other method if you thought it was too great of a burden for the property owner. Thank you. Ms. Green? Um, I agree with Mickey. I think this is, is awesome. It probably needs a little tweaking. You know, we've had the problem over the years of these demo by neglects where the people are out of town, they're avoiding any citations, any letters, and they just let the property deteriorate. So if we could go in, put a tax lien on them, it wakes them up. And in the case of like Nine Prospect, once he was kind of, the owner was kind of pushed to the wall that this house was doing by neglect, he put it up and sold it, and it's now going to be a gorgeous residence. They are working on it as we speak. So I like this. I think it has some teeth to it. Mr. McClellan? So if it, if it goes to the tax collector and it's not paid, does it, does it then go to the state uh, uh, land commissioner and get sold? After three that way, years, is that is that the way it follows that process? Right. Once it's turned over to them, it's in their hands, and then when it sells, then they then they pay yeah. the deficit. Well, okay. Because traditionally, when those sell at auction, they sell for <clears throat> they take no less than what the face value is. Well, they also have a lot of, they have minimum, they've got their taxes that th that's on there too. It's not just... Well, that's, I, I understand that, but I, and that may be all that they may still require. I don't know. Do you know how that works, Tim? If, if it's part of the tax bill whenever they sell it, uh, when the state sells it, does it, they still try to cover that too, or? 
From the way I read the uh, enabling legislation from the state, it would be simply uh, included in the full amount. So they would try to sell that as the minimum for the property. Yeah, that's 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 what they do. They they usually sell for. I mean, they price it in at the minimum. Uh, may not bring it. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, again, uh, we'll bring this up the next council meeting for discussion. I just want to bring this up for y'all for review on there. Um, all right. That uh, unfinished business. Uh, we have none. So that brings us to agenda setting. Anybody got anything for the agenda for next month? All right, hearing none, uh, City Council comments. Mr. Thomas, start on your end. Being chairperson is, is a very difficult job, and I appreciate all the effort that you put into it. But everybody at the table has something to say, and everybody else thinks it's either important or it's silly. But we all get a chance to talk. And I really didn't appreciate the way you shushed up the, the city clerk. She is a, an important member of the city administration, and she does have some knowledge to bring to the table. Ms. Green? I would like to welcome our newest member to council. I'm excited. I think he's going to be great. And other than that, everybody, town looks great. Ms. Snyder? Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Mr. Buford, no comment. Mr. Meyer. I Take hope I can live up to everyone's expectations. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, yeah. Mr. McClellan. Uh, no comment. All right. Uh, we have uh, events coming up the uh, next several weeks. We have the Christmas parade Friday. Um, Oh, yeah, November the 30th, starting at 6 p.m., starting at the library, and we'll be going down uh, through Spring Street, 6 o'clock. December the 1st, we'll have Santa and the fire department uh, in the park from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the Basin Park. And December 1st, also, we'll have the candlelight tour of homes from 3 to 8 p.m. Uh, and you can see the Historical Museum or the Chamber of Commerce for tickets. And also on the 1st will be John Two Hawks, Two Hawks concert uh, from 7 to 9 at the Odd. And December the 6th, 52nd annual Silver Tea from 1.30 to 3.30 at the Crescent Hotel. And on December the 8th, we'll have a night of merrymaking and living windows from 5 to 8 p.m. in the downtown. And then also that night, 8 uh, on the 8th, we'll have the Ozark Corral concert, 7.30 p.m. at the Odd. Uh, and that's all I have. I can get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, so moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye.